Good evening and welcome. My name is Tony Dagonia. Today we're going to do project number one for the Simply Learn AWS Solution Architect Associate course. We've pre recorded this at one point, uh, but it didn't quite turn out the way I wanted, so I thought we might do it again. Um, the first project is pretty simple. Uh, essentially, what we're going to do is uh, the scenario is is that we have a development team that needs to create a small Linux instance for testing a new application. Uh, we have to create an EC2 instance per their defined specifications. After a few days, the development team will come back and inform us that they want to move the instance into production. But before they do that, they want to. Use they want us to change the specifications of the instance. The goals of the project are to create an EC2 instance with the following specifications. Uh, we need to create an AMI with Amazon Linux. Uh, the instance type is a T2 Nano. The volume type is 8 gigabyte magnetic. And then once we go to reconfigure uh, the instance, uh, we'll configure it to a, a T2 small, uh, we'll upgrade or increase the uh, volume type uh, to a 12 gigabyte general purpose SSD, and then we'll verify whether the root volume on the EC2 instance is displaying the correct size. All right, so I've already got the uh, AWS panel uh, up and ready to go, so we'll get started. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to go in and take a look and make sure that we have a, a virtual private cloud. Uh, it's Amazon's best practice that uh, you create a new private cloud instead of using the default. You can use that, however, um, it just makes it a bit more manageable and you know a little bit more about what's going on when you create, when you create a, a new clean slate. If you will. So we'll start there by clicking on VPC. And we'll give this just a second. It will show us our VPCs. It says that we have two VPCs. Uh, these are for, from some other, uh, some other uh, things that were going on. So we'll go ahead and create a new VPC. And uh, the first thing it's gonna do is ask us to create a name. Uh, so we will create the name simply learn uh, dash begonia dash bpc we want it to be unique and then uh, it wants to know what uh, ipv4 cidr block we're going to give it now we can give it everything all the way up to a slash 16 block so we'll do that at this time with the 10 series and then slash 16. Uh, we're not going to worry about uh, a CIDR block for IPv6. Uh, if we wanted to use that, then Amazon would provide us with a block. And uh, for tenancy, we're going to go with default. Um, we could go with dedicated, however, that would be substantially more expensive. Uh, and for, for uh, demo's sake, we're just going to leave it at a default. Let's go ahead and create this. And there we have our uh, new, v, uh, new VPC, and we're ready to go. Uh, we've got CIDRs, we've got everything that we need here. So we'll go back over to the Services tab, we'll drop that down, and let's go to EC2 so that we can go ahead and create uh, our new EC2 instance. So when we get to the EC2 instance uh, uh, dashboard, we take a look and we see that we have zero running instances. Uh, everything looks good. Uh, all of our uh, service statuses are good. Our av availability zones are all good. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, go down here and click on launch an instance. And our very first uh, 
choice here is the Amazon Linux AMI uh, HVM with SSD volume type. So we go ahead and select that. Um, we we'll take a look and we see that the very first choice is the T2 Nano. Now, when we choose that, that is not the free tier, uh, and it will mention that to us in just a moment. So we'll go ahead and configure that. We're going to configure one uh, instance. Uh, we're going to take a look at the network here. We'll connect that up to the uh, Simply Learn to Gony VPC. And uh, here it shows that we don't have any subnets, so we'll go ahead and create a new subnet real quick. And uh, we'll take a look. Uh, we don't have any that we've created, so we'll create a new subnet. Uh, we'll call this uh, simply learn dash begonia dash subnet one we'll assign it to our VPC uh, we'll go ahead and assign it to uh, US East 1B availability zone and we're going to give it a slash 24 uh, subnet uh, with a 10.0.1.0 slash 24 we'll give it 254 usable IP addresses and uh, we'll click on yes, create. And uh, that will automatically associate that. Uh, and so then we'll take a look. There is uh, nothing else to do there. So we'll close this down. We'll go back over here and take a look at our subnets. And we'll back up one, one step. Uh, better yet, we'll just go ahead and refresh because it's not showing up currently. So it's going to probably make us start over, and that's okay. We'll go ahead and uh, We'll start over, choose our T2 Nano. We'll configure our instance details uh, with our VPC. The Simply Learn Begonia, it automatically assigns the uh, Simply Learn Begonia subnet 1 with 251 uh, usable IP addresses. Uh, we're not going to worry about assigning any public IP addresses at this time. Uh, our IAM role, we're limited on what we can do there because. Uh, we don't have permissions because this is the demonstration uh, style that we're utilizing. Uh, and then we want to be careful when we take a look at our shutdown behavior. Um, with our shutdown behavior, if we don't uh, enable termination protection, uh, then when we stop uh, the instance, it will automatically delete uh, all of our data. So on the shutdown behavior, we want to Tell it to stop only. We're not going to worry about uh, enabling CloudWatch right now. And uh, we'll leave uh, our tenancy on shared tenancy. Uh, if we were to uh, drop that down to dedicated or dedicated host, uh, it would be substantially more, uh, more costly. So uh, we're not going to do that at this time. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is add some storage. Make note, this XVDA is uh, actually the root drive. So you have to be very careful that you remember that because we're going to uh, unallocate this drive and reallocate it later uh, in the lesson so that uh, uh, we can upgrade the size of the drive. Uh, and we'll need to make note of that because when it reassigns it back, it will not assign it back as XVDA. We'll have to manually do that. So we're going to take this uh, 8 gigabyte, we drop this down and take it to magnetic, uh, which is, by the way, uh, substantially slower uh, than the SSD drive. Uh, however, it's what's called for for this uh, particular case. Uh, 
So we'll go next and create some tags. And tagging is very, very important because this is kind of how you describe what's going on with the instance. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just say, uh, we'll create a name tag and uh, we'll call that simply learn junior dash project dash one uh, just so we can keep track of that i'm not going to worry about any more tags right now however you could tag a number of things uh, so we'll, we'll keep that the way it is for now uh, we'll move on and we'll go to the security group um, when uh, we take a look at the security group we're going to we'll change the security group name to simply learn uh, go in SG1, uh, just so we keep that pretty standardized. Uh, now, remember, it comes default with your SSH so that you can, can access uh, access your, your Linux server. Uh, but if we were going to make this a web server, then we could actually go in here and do things like uh, setting up uh, DNS. And we would say DNS from anywhere, uh, or you could uh, assign a specific IP address to pull DNS from. Um, if we were going to do HTTP, then we allow HTTP from anywhere uh, because that would mean it was a web server. Uh, and we would want to allow inbound traffic uh, on HTTP and HTTPS. Uh, if we were doing a mail server, then, uh, you know, we could uh, set up the SMTP, the IMAP, or POP3, or anything like that. So we'll just go with these with these four basic uh, protocols right now because uh, these are the protocols that uh, are most common for this kind of server. So we'll keep this as it is, and then we'll go to uh, review and launch. And now it is telling us here uh that because the iops the overall performance uh that the boot volume is better off being an ssd or general purpose uh but because of the project we're going to go ahead and keep it as a magnetic boot volume. all right so we'll click next and uh, this tells us that for our security group that we're kind of wide open to the world which we which we knew already uh we would ideally want to uh Rain that in, uh, in, you know, in a real instance, but for what we're doing, we're fine for now. Uh, okay, so uh, everything looks good, looks like it should. Uh, we'll go ahead and launch the instance. Uh, this is very important. Uh, when you create a session and an instance, you only get uh, one key pair for everything that you build in that particular session. So we'll go ahead and create a new key pair. And we'll call it simply learn uh, going in. And then we'll use today's date, 552017. And we'll download this key pair. Uh, that'll download uh, as a notepad. We'll download that as a PIM file and it'll drop right into my download files and we'll keep it there for now we're not going to probably need it during this session but we may need it in a future session so uh let's go ahead and launch the instance okay so this says our instances are launching uh we could set up billing alerts a uh, number of other things we can do here uh, that will uh, keep us in the loop what's going on with our instance whether it's uh, uh, log you know log tracking or being made aware of billing alerts things like that uh, we're not too worried about those right now let's go ahead and go view the instances okay so our instance is up and running our status checks are running uh, and once uh, once those are done, they'll come up and tell us, you know, what's going on. Uh, something interesting to note, uh, you can take a look over here at the right-hand side, and there's some, some buttons there that will automatically adjust 
uh, your views so you can see your screens better here. Uh, remember we talked about the dev uh, slash uh, XVDA for your root device and for your block device. Uh, very important to, to uh, take a look at and understand. Um, okay. So uh, from here, we're going to let this run for a few minutes and uh, let those uh, checks run. And once that's done, then I'll move on and do the next thing. So give me just one second, and uh, we will be ready to move on and do our, our next part of this lab. We'll refresh that, still show those initial items. One more time, still initializing. Initializing. And uh, so what we'll do here while that's initializing is we'll actually go down here to the, uh, the EBS section. We'll take a look at our volumes. And we see the volume that we have assigned in use here. We'll click on that. Uh, when we look down here, once again, we'll click, take a look at these uh, very specific things. Uh, we can see the volume ID, the size, when it was created, it's in use, uh, what the drive is, uh, the snapshot, a number of other things. Um, what we're going to do here uh, is actually we're going to create a snapshot of this volume. And uh, we'll name this snapshot simply learn dash junior dash SS1 for snapshot one. And then I'll copy and paste that into the description. We'll go ahead and create that. And uh, the creation has started. We'll take a look here and we'll see uh, how this is, is working out for us. Uh, we'll take a look at our snapshots and see if that's done. Uh, it is still pending over here. We'll do a quick refresh because it said it was at 99%. And uh, still at 99%. And you notice it says it's an eight gigabyte snapshot. Something interesting there, and I'll show you in just a moment. We're actually going to be able to increase the size of that snapshot when we create a volume. So as we can see, we've got uh, eight gigabytes of uh, eight gigabyte or snapshot here. So let's go back and take a look at our volumes. And we'll go ahead and create a new volume. Take a look at the actions. There we go. I uh, just clicked on the wrong button there. We're going to create a volume. Uh, we're going to make that a general purpose SSD. We're going to make it a 12 gig volume. Uh, we're going to keep it in US East 1B just like we talked about. Uh, and we'll go ahead and create that volume. And it was created successfully. So we'll go up here and check. And we'll see here. Uh, we see this volume here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and rename it. Uh, simply learn. Dash junior dash volume one dash twelve gigabytes, and we'll click save. So we know that this is the new volume that we're going to attach once we go upgrade uh, upgrade our server our server here in just a second. All right, so 
let's go back up here to our EC2 dashboard. And we're going to look at our running instances. And we'll see that this is still running. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go to the instance state and we're going to stop it. Now remember, this is going to say that we're going to lose all of our ephemeral storage, but remember we, we're not terminating, we're stopping. Uh, had we not done the terminate protection, then we would lose everything uh, when we stop this instance. So we're going to stop that. Give it a second. I'm stopping. These things don't necessarily happen instant, instantaneously, uh, like any hardware, you know, depending on the resources. But it will kind of depend on the amount of time that. Sometimes clicking on the refresh button up here helps to uh, to make it go appear a little faster. Okay, so we're stopped. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we go to our instance settings, and we want to change our instance type. We're going to change it to a T2 small. And we talked about, and we'll click apply. And then we want to go ahead and start this uh, instance back up just to make sure it's going to boot up properly. And we'll give it just a second. We'll refresh and see what it's doing. Should be a little faster than before because it's got a bit more resources. All right, she's up and running. And we'll see that we've still got our XVDA over here. Uh, shows our volume uh, ID, when it was created, everything like that. And uh, our AMI ID uh, shows that our image size is 8 gigabytes, uh, and that's okay. Uh, we've got our key pair name. We've got uh, everything that we need right here. Everything looks good. So from here, we're actually going to go back and stop one more time. Click Yes, Stop. Give this a second. And once it stops, then we'll go back down to our volumes. And I promise this will shut down at some point in the very near future. Uh, it just seems to be taking a few minutes. Of course, it's kind of like watching boiling water. As soon as, uh, as, soon as you start watching it, it's going to take forever. Ah, there we go. It is stopped. Okay, so let's go down here to our volumes. And we see our project one volume, which is our standard eight gigabyte. So we got the snapshot, attachment information. We're actually going to take this and we're going to uh, detach this volume. Click on yes, detach. And we'll see in just a second here. 
we're, we're sure is that it's intact. And there it shows us available right there. Uh, we look here, auto enable IO, availability zone, everything looks good. Uh, volume type, and uh, we're detached. So we'll click on the one above it that we set up for the 12 gig volume. We'll go ahead and attach that volume. And here we'll choose uh, simply the only begun your project one, which is stop. We'll go ahead and attach that. Now, here's the important part. And remember, I told you that it would attach itself as uh, a different drive in the ladder. Well, there it's going to try and attach itself as uh, drive letter F. So we need to change that to XVDA so that it will attach as the root. And uh, we'll go ahead and attach this. And there you go. It's attached and it shows that it's in use. Uh, it shows it's 12 gigabytes in size, shows the volume ID, and shows the attachment information. Okay. So, uh, we're back here. We're looking at the actual uh, EC2 instance again. Uh, we're ready to go there. So, let's go ahead and start this instance. And now here's something key to understand. If for some reason this volume did not, uh, the snapshot did not take properly and there's an issue, then what I found is that this, uh, this instance will start up and then shut down again very quickly. Uh, so we'll see what happens here. I think more than likely we're going to find that this is, uh, everything's nice and clean and working properly. Okay, so we're up and running. Everything looks good. Uh, we see here that uh, that we've got everything we need. Uh, key pair is right. Uh, IP address is the same. Subnet. Uh, we're in the availability zone. There's no scheduled events. Uh, everything looks as it should. We'll do a quick refresh. Too, too small. We'll take a look at our status checks. Uh, our status checks are still running. We'll take a look at our monitoring. Um, not a whole lot to see here. It's not like we're putting a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, hard work on this thing. Uh, we'll go back here. We'll go actions. And we're we'll actually take a look at the Android and the networking, everything like this. Just want to make sure everything looks good. Um, and this is just, I just like to, to look around and make sure that everything looks the way it should. Okay. And uh, this is uh, just about all that you need to do. Uh, everything looks good here. Um, yeah, so this project is complete. We know that uh, when we go look uh, over here at the volumes, uh, that it's going to tell us it's 12 gig volume. Uh, it's attached appropriately, but everything looks good. Uh, we'll take a look here. Everything looks good there. We'll take a look at our monitoring. Um, of course, there's really not a whole lot to look at there. Um, I believe uh, I believe we're done. So, with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll let everyone go. Thank you so much for joining me for this, and. Uh, we will uh, do project number two shortly. Thank you very much and have a wonderful evening.